It's J Doodle time. It's J Doodle time. So I do have my paper ready for this. So day. really quick. So the topic is city fish. City fish. Okay. I know we do, do a lot of fish, but there's a reason for the, the, I like city fish. I'm gonna make sure I'm kind of in the right zone so you guys can actually see something. And so again, it's up for you to interpret what a city fish is at all. And this week's squam work, by the way, the topic was um, goblin trans goblin vehicle or goblin transportation devices. Sir Chich asked who I am. I guess most old people, most people know who I am, especially if they've seen me before. Hi, I'm Kat. I'm Steve's art pimp and wife. Mwah. We need to get out your full title. Oh gosh, my full title? Yeah. Uh, I have to look it up. I should have it memorized, but brains don't work anymore, Steve. All right, the full title is Line Goddess, Angel of Asking, Keeper of Order, Shouter of Shouting, The Voice and the Voiceless, all the All Answering and Bearer of the Sacred Sign Up Sheet, Purveyor of Playmats and Pimp of Prince, The Muscle and the Hand of Steve. <laughs> That's yep. my full title. Art Pimp for short. Steve, that looks like a wonderful and beautiful... He's a city fish. City fish. He's a business fish. Business city he's fish. Gonna go, he's gonna go make some business. It's good to meet you too, Sir Chich. Master Chef is telling me it's a solid title and I should get it on a name badge. I think that would make, like, they, that wouldn't be a badge anymore. I think that'd be like a name plate. Um, at one of our GPs, they tried to, uh, to, to put that on a badge for Cat. Um, and they were just like, yeah, we can't print that many characters, but we're going to try and get a sign for you. Yes, and well, that's where Steve made it for, is they asked for my title, and so Steve made my whole title. It's just the nameplate, like the plaque will go across the entire front of the desk. Right? <laughs> yeah, you'd have, you'd have the name tag, and it would just keep on going, and you'd have to like be careful not to like, clip See, people with it. See, my old job, and I, I, I brought this up before, at my old job, I used to work at GameStop. I loved it. It was a really fun job. Um, when I worked at GameStop, on my on my name tag, it said Heartless Wench. It said Cat, <laughs> Heartless Wench. Nice. All right, my great. city fish is all done. All right, that is a beautiful city fish. So that is also for, I guess, 24 doodle dollars? Yeah, if you want that, that's that'll be available to whoever wants to buy it first. And again, the original things like that. So, your audio's blowing out is what they say. Oh. It's because the mic's right there, Steve. Uh, here. You're using your outside voice. I'll use my inside voice. And you're getting excited, which is, is this, cool. Is this better? I don't know. I could use my, what? I could be Batman. Oh gosh, For please. the whole episode. Stop it. <laughs> These are the, the last of my pre-order queue. And I've got, I've got a fair number of questions about how I do alterations. Um, and I know we kind of tried to do one at a show on, on a Sketch and Scotch before, but the last time we did it, the problem is some of this stuff needs some time to dry in between. Nobody literally wants to watch paint dry. This time what I did is I have these all set up kind of in different stages so that I don't need to wait for anything to dry. So this one's, this one's done, right? This is where we're going. And then this one's, this one's blank. We're gonna start with paint markers on this one. This one's got dry paint marker. This one's got paint marker and Copic done already. So I'm just going to go step by step. This one will get paint marker and then this one will get Copic and then this one will get uh, the, the final touch mini Sharpie. So you'll see a whole process. It'll just be over the course of three different cards. So when we start with the thing, reference is good. So we've got a, um, we've got two Donato pieces. Of course, Donato. Because he's boss. amazing. Um, and, uh, and a Moxie. And normally you'll see me do this on my phone because it shows that's the easiest. But if you have something in mind before you go to a show, it really helps to print oh, out some reference for me. Out that reference, it's great. Or it keeps things going if faster. If you don't have printed reference, if you already have the reference looked up by the time you get to Steve for your time, that helps too. This is my big, my big thing. Of People are going to ask what kind of markers. The markers. Are, Steve, These are so. Deco Color paint markers. Um, they, they smell terrible, they're poisonous, and they like to explode. But they're fast and they're shiny when they're done. So I'm sacrificing my health for you guys. Um, you guys are going to hear this. So this, this, is, this is how you have to prepare It is the your... call of the paint marker. So step one, with these markers, you're going to shake the crap out of them. Shake them like a bad child. 
And when your arm starts to feel uh, numb, keep shaking. Because they need a lot, a lot, a lot of shaking. And then... Um, Shake it like a Polaroid picture. You need something to, to blot the paint because they will pee. They just do it. They just. Well, and it's it also kind of a testing, like gets it started too. Yeah, and then you know, just go for it. Now, um, for the initial stage here, you don't have to get super perfect with your uh, with your lines because you're going to put lines in later. So you just need to put down a base color everywhere you're going to need it to work on top of. And if there's little details, do that later with a marker as well. So this is kind of like, um, I mean, if you want to talk about it from like kind of an artistic standpoint, this is your flats. And we're even going to do a new face for Moxie because she wears that super white makeup. Faces on magic cards are hard to do because magic cards are really, really, really tiny. So um, let's just call this an advanced technique that you should avoid if you can. Um, one of the things that's nice about doing card alters is all of your structure is already there. You don't have to work out perspective, you don't have to work out uh, proportions or anatomy. You're just replacing some of the, some of the fiddly bits that are already there. Um, and maybe one of these times we'll, we'll also try and do like an oil painted altar so you can see how the, the really crazy stuff comes together. Robert the 55th says, it's been so long since he's seen you with paint markers. It's good to see it again. <laughs> Robert's the one that, that first week when I was using the paint marker started shaking it. He's like, it's a paint marker! <laughs> I know that sound. <laughs> I know that sound. Yeah, Rob, Robert the 55th helps out at all, a bunch of our shows. Rock Panda Warrior said, this is so unnerving. I've never watched anyone go hog wild on a card before. <laughs> it is funny to watch people, like, people give you this Liliana and it looks like this when it starts and people are like, they like start to panic a little. You can kind of see it. And, uh... This one isn't, um, if you watch over the weekend, that one's more funny to watch because um, the game we play is like figuring out what he's drawing if we don't say ahead of time. Figuring out what he's drawing and then it's so funny because it just looks like blurbs of paint and it does until he takes out those final markers and does those like just little fine lines and then it brings it all together. And the very best is when somebody says, uh, just do whatever. And I say, okay, well, that might be weird. Eh, just whatever. And they oh, watch. It's turned out wonderfully weird. It, it's honestly not quite as fun as it used to be because people have come to trust me. And that's great. But the, the first, first little while when people would say, hey, do you do card alters? And they had no idea. They'd never seen them before. They would come to me and they'd say, yeah, just you know, do your thing, whatever. If you do card alters, that's cool and they would hand me their, at the time, like $60 Liliana. So it's, it's, it's a pricey thing to be um, getting something crappy on. And as I'm working, they're just like, they just get more and more terrified. They're just like, oh crap, I've just, I've just given up. Well, there goes 60 bucks and whatever I'm paying for this altar. So oh, it's, it's, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Just keep doing what you're doing. And by the end, and. It's almost like immediate because it's those last little, um, those last little things that tie it all together and it suddenly makes sense. So they, they kind of get that just like, yeah, I'm just waiting to be done now. And then the last couple lines I go, holy crap, oh, that's awesome. And then they get super excited. And, and that, was the, that was a super awesome payoff for me. Toying with people's emotions. Yeah, yeah, it's the closest I get to being Loki. Which altar have you done the most? <laughs> oh, it's yeah, pretty straightforward. Uh, this Liliana. Liliana has. Oh, um, I saw it earlier, but Poison, I think it was Poison Stripes, said, Where do you get the lilies? Uh, they're never mine. People send them to me. Well, people hand them to me in, in line. Yeah. These ones are pre orders, so they were sent to me, but that's not usually yeah. how it's done. It oh, these are. So this is my little extra fine marker. For, for really fine detail work. However, I use them very, very rarely and very sparingly. Most of the fine detail stuff I do with the Sharpies later. Um, and I'll say this before anybody orders them. Line work, don't use these. Don't use these for line work. They bleed into each other. They are kind of globby. Um, you won't get fine line work no matter how good you are. They just aren't consistent enough. So for fine line work, you, you use Sharpies. Um, or 
you can use things like micron pens, but you have to be careful with those because they don't dry very well. Yeah, the tried and true um, is the Sharpies, because a lot of other, that, that's the problem like Steve was saying, a lot of the other, um, a lot of the other stuff doesn't dry. So you need to watch how they interact. Also, sometimes there can be problems too because some pens eat, uh, some pens eat other pens. You gotta be a little bit careful about trying to make corrections by going over one color with another of the paint markers. So if I put like this paint marker over top of the white because I just decided, like she's got these little black stripes and I thought, oh, I'll just use this dark brown for those black stripes. Um, that's not a great idea. You can do little itty bitty bits where maybe you've um, gone over an invisible line in your head or, or something that you've drawn. So you can, you can adjust borders a little bit, but if you try and like go over it again, um, even if it's been dried for days, the solvent in these markers will dissolve that layer and they'll mix together and you'll get this weird sort of mottled cheese. Um, poison starts to saying pilot pens are good for line work, but I think pilot pens don't dry on that. Cabby Boys says alcohol-based inks can also eat into the card. Mm. These are alcohol. We haven't had too base, many but we've yeah we've never had them hurt the. Th these these are actually xylitol, which is or xylene, which is different and way more poisonous. Someone asked, is there an alter like in specific that you always get asked to do on the link? Um, uh, Lily and Tishandra is a is a really or the um, common one. Uh, Princess Leia is a pretty common one. Poison Stripe says, no, 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 not the pilot pen, the metallic one, she said, the V5s. Uh, I have not tried um, those. I think we have, actually. Those ones don't dry on that. Oh, the that... The V5s are really fun to draw with. They're so inky and beautiful. They don't dry on this. Yeah, that is um, a thing to experiment with, especially for us. It's a little bit... Um, well, it's, it's very crucial that things dry, because I can't say, okay, I'm done with your altar. Now, don't touch it or do anything with it for three or four days. Like, we already um, test the patience of people saying, yeah, don't put it in a sleeve for an hour. Three hours. They're already um, like, oh. asking about, and this is a good thing to talk about right now. Have you tried spritzing the card with hairspray to prepare it for an altar? Transparent, mar um, transparent matte spray paint primer. Um, Primers would be great, but the whole reason he's doing them with these terrible markers is that it needs to be transportable on an airplane. Well, and it needs to be something that we can do on the spot for everybody. There's a, a, a very different way I approach um, an altar that I have time to do at home versus one at a show. And really um, It's quick, true of sketches, too. For a quick and easy, um, quick and easy prep on a card like this, Erasers. Um, plastic erasers. The Japanese showed us this. Um, it's the reason that Steve can draw on foils now, is if you get a plastic eraser and just rub over the top of a um, of the foil, it gives it enough of a texture for it to stick. Now, if Steve's at home, he has a whole other regimen that he can talk to you about. And again, with this, you have to be really careful with spray paints and testing out the different markers you're using because they eat each other. Well, if I'm at home, I, I don't use the paint markers at all, really. I know that I'm doing it right now as we speak, but um, that's because of the speed and because it's become one of the standards that I do and that people expect. Um, when I have time at home, I use acrylics and oil paints. Um, I'll prep the card first. I'll uh, seal the card afterwards. And I just do a, a lot more with them. Um, the issue that we come across at shows is it has to be something that we can do 50 times in a row and is not going to affect people in line or the venue. I mean, if we if we started spray sealing everything, they'd get messy in a hurry and or people would be mad. So um, that's part of the reason why you can't get like a black thumb sketch at an event is it needs a lot of treatment, a lot of different layers, and those layers need to dry and all that. So um, this, is, this is pretty much as far as it needs to go for the paint blob stage. It's not necessarily staying in the lines. It's, I mean, you can tell it's probably gonna be moxie eventually. Actually, I'm gonna do one more thing. 
Um, I'm gonna put her a little gold trim. When you have time to prep the surface, what are you using? Uh, for acrylic, which I'll, even for oil painting, I'll use as kind of a base coat. Um, I like, I like these golden, golden open acrylics. They last take a little. Forever to dry. Well, that, that's actually why I like them. They take forever to dry, uh, but that means I can work with them a little bit longer, and they dry really quick if you apply them to a little bit of heat. So I'll throw them in the warming drawer in my oven, which gets to about 170, and it'll dry within a few minutes. So I can work with it, and then when I'm ready to move on, I just throw it in there and grab a snack or something. Then I move to... Well, but don't you put down a... You put down a clear base to put that on? Oh, that's your... No. That's what you do your tooth with? That actually gives good tooth, I mm -hmm. agree. Yeah, I, I, don't, um, I don't do any real prep on the card before I start putting down acrylic. I might use a little bit of the eraser to give it, to rough it up and get some of the like skin oils and stuff off, but the acrylic sticks really well, so. Uh, and oil actually sticks really well too. Uh, for oils, I use these. Um, these are so M gram. So you the acrylic for... Um, Is that my seven minutes? Yeah. <laughs> you, you only use the acrylic for your base, again, for your flats. Yeah, so I would use the acrylic basically to the same level as this. I would put down some, some flat color so that it has coverage that I can, I can mix the oil on top of and not have to worry about too much translucency in the oil coming through. Um, I thin it out with um, a half mix of Gamsol and walnut alkid. That doesn't help. But uh, yeah, about half and half. And that keeps it thin enough that it doesn't get all chunky on your card, but it still gives you plenty of coverage and some nice flow. It's actually, let's tease. All right, commercial break. commercial break. This commercial break is brought to you by Scott. The O. Henry Punoff and Murloc fan fiction. Oh. Oh, that sounds horrible. Is um, it erotic fan fiction? <laughs> Merlotica? Oh, gosh. Um, so anyway, we like to remind people to like, love, follow, bring your friends, come in and, uh, and come to Sketch and Scotch. Scotch is spelled with an S-K, not an S-C. And, uh, it's because all my schooling, my, my book learning. Yeah. Uh -huh. And so... Um, yeah, and then also come and see us this weekend at GP San Antonio. Um, also watch the TNT show. <laughs> yeah, watch the TNT show. I'll just throw that in there. I've been on the TNT show for the last few episodes. Mm -hmm. Rock'em Sock'em Robots. Poison Stripes is wondering what the TNT show is. TNT show is um, a nerd... Scott. T Scott. Take it, take it away. It's a TNT show. It is a nerd-centric game show that we post on YouTube pretty much every week, except for this week because I'm totally late. We just uh, discuss important topics and questions. Here, and here, we can actually do one and people can start can start contributing in the chat to one. Um, if there was a new Lego franchise, one that hasn't been done before, so, you know, there's already been some Lego franchise, like Batman and stuff, best and worst ideas for a new Lego franchise. <laughs> Um, so Steve, tell us a little bit what you're doing and then we'll start reading off people's ideas for best and worst new LEGO franchises. Okay, so um, this is my Copic Marker Pass. Uh, you usually only get these with the doubles because they take a little bit of extra time. Um, these, are, these are Copic Markers. You probably saw them, but let's see. And it's just a tinting. It's, it's, yeah, it's these are very translucent. Um, or transparent or whatever you want to call them. You, you can't really, like... If I were to try and make um, something darker, it really wouldn't work. Like, if I draw on there, it's just, it doesn't. But for, uh, for tinting things, just giving it a little bit of color here and there, and I use it um, for things like fire and energy effects because the white from the, uh, from the deco them color. The wings. You, there, you oh, yeah, I'm going to show wings. you. I'm going to show you the magical. wings. The but wings. anyway, that's what he's doing right now. Um, so. Cabby Boy says he wants Bionicle Gen 3, which Bionicles is already a franchise, but I kind of agree, it'd be fun. Poison Stripes says the Metal Gear series for Legos. Oh, that'd be cool. 
Um, I said Cthulhu. One of mine was like a Lovecraftian Legos, and it even is a, an alliteration of Craftian Legos. Um, Poison Stripe says worse. Different varieties of bubblegum. What? What was? You had one for bubble worse. What was it, Scott? Uh, the Special Olympics. Oh gosh. Was pretty horrible for a franchise. That's that's terrible. Or like Captain Crunch, because then they both cut the roof of your mouth a lot. <laughs> and the bottom of your feet. <laughs> Captain Crunch, the most deadly Lego expansion ever. I don't and know actually, if this is a Lego or if this is a cereal. Yep, yeah, just like <laughs> along the same thoughts of Poison Stripes, where it's like bubblegum. Is that Jay Mc said the worst idea is like food, it's like hot dogs and cakes, and just like you guys are saying. Get more kids to eat Legos. It's good. Or if you wanted one that would just never, ever, ever sell. Dan you... said the one you said before that I remembered. Best Skyrim, worst Fifty Shades of Grey. <laughs> oh, oh, good call. <laughs> um, Jay Mc said Magic the Gathering Legos would be a great idea. Yeah. That was my answer too. That was one of the ones that uh, was asked on, on the TNT show that I was on. And I thought I was going to win, and I didn't win with that. You should have won with that. You had crowd favorite, and then I randomly grabbed the exact wrong people. Yes, you, you did. You grabbed the guy who was like a Pokemon rep, and he's like, Pokemon, obviously. <laughs> it's like, oh, okay, oops. Oh, yeah. All right, I, I'm trying to think of another horrible, really... <laughs> I like Quantarts. I, I think that's already kind of a franchise, though. The worst... Leave out at night on the floor version. Dude, I got when I was little. <laughs> That's where the little, Japanese invented their uh, caltrops from. <laughs> from Legos. Seriously. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to show you guys the the coolest trick about the Copics, right? The Copics, um, you can't layer them at all, right? They, they will just eat other. through each other. Now you can use that to your advantage. So I've filled in these wings, and they're just sort of rough and and they're awfully close to the skin color and they don't really look like wings. So I take a lighter color and I can just uh, erase little wing shapes by using yeah, a lighter part color. Yeah, this so cool. You know what, just a little bit of a lighter color than that still. That one's thick enough it's still getting streaky. You can see how you can make wings with it, it's pretty cool. Okay, so that's pretty much all I need to do for... Um, all right. So this is just a quick thing to show you guys. Uh, Copic has a colorless blender. Now for card alters, because they're so slick, it's not really a blender, right? It won't blend at all, but it's a perfect eraser. This will take any and all of the Copic off and it will leave the paint marker. It, will, it won't touch it. Um, the Copic is pure alcohol based and for whatever reason, the xylene is not particularly affected. Yeah, um, it's 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 solvent is stronger, and won't won't mess with it. So you can you can erase the Copic stuff off entirely. Um, by the way, Quantar wanted to know when using the second Copic to wipe, do you have a clean? Do you have to clip clean the tip occasionally? Yeah, yeah. I uh, I guess that's Same kind of off camera. So uh, it will pick up the color that it's wiping off, and so you do need to uh, clean it clean it a little bit here and there. But it it's it doesn't take that old color forever. So we're now. This is this is the last phase where we just do the um, we do sharpies, right? So these are just ultra fine sharpies. Uh, all you really need is a black one. Uh, I use colors now most of the time because it's a little less harsh in the finished product but it is also more difficult to work with. Uh, the black just goes on like a line. Uh, the colors don't always play nice with the Copic, and so you kind of have to go over a line several times sometimes to get it to actually sit down. Um, and I make the most use of brown, just a basic brown. It works for, it's, it's dark enough that it works like you can do the whole thing in brown and it just won't look as harsh as black. Uh, it works great for skin, it works great for almost anything because if it's sitting on top of a complementary color like like green here, it will darken up enough that it's more like a black. If it's on top of uh, skin or something, it retains a lot of its brown so it's it's good to go with anything. I'm gonna go with a green and a brown 
for the Sisters of Stone here. Um, and if you're not familiar with the original art, right, all right, it's going to be upside down because I can't move the camera, but um, cool classic Gorgon piece from Donato. Asteroxa says Sharpies should uh, sponsor you. Totally. They totally should. Absolutely. And uh, the one I would, I would most want a sponsorship from is ac actually the Copic because they're very expensive. Uh, but they last forever. And they, I've, um, the I've had these for like seven years. But um, I go through a whole lot more of the deco color. Uh, these, for one, they don't last as long in the first place, but also that when they start misbehaving, they don't stop misbehaving. So I will throw them away long before they've actually run out of ink. So maybe that would be the better, um, the better sponsorship. Except that I'm constantly Deco. cursing them. I actually, I, I accidentally hit a kid with one. Oh gosh, yes. <laughs> Eternal not. Weekend. I was like, I was shaking one. It was mad, and it was, it was like wasn't working. And I just, I just like flicked it like this, and it just goes whoo, 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 and smacks a kid. <laughs> Just, just at the table behind us, and I felt really bad. And I think we gave him a print or something to make up for it, because it's like, I, I didn't mean to attack a player, I swear. And I could easily use the green for this whole piece, because uh, I think you can tell from the stream. Uh, I shaded this one not with the same uh, skin color Copic, but it was a kind of an olive green to give her a bit of a, a green skin tone. but. First we'll try the brown. We'll see if, if it brings a little bit of warmth back. Because sometimes having a little bit of color interplay is, is nice. Yeah, I think that's, that's working better, having a little bit of that warmth back in the... You can kind of tell on the stream. The, the brown is warmer, and it's helping pull that skin apart from the, uh, the dress. This is a little bit of what we were talking about last week with color choices, is you, you can give different surfaces a color identity, and then that helps you separate what is what. And when you're talking about such limitations as a, these kind of altars give you, where you only have so many colors, you don't have much, much space, you can't do detail, you can't do uh, too much shading, which means you can't do too much surface treatment, uh, it's nice to have some other go-tos to separate things out into, uh, you know, this is where her, her dress ends and her skin begins, and it would have had to have been Dan one of the deco color the, markers. If the victim of Steve Rage was a fan, he'd be honored to be smacked by the pen. See, the problem <laughs> is Steve throws it over his shoulder, so he actually hit a kid in another artist's line. Yeah. That's what you get for being in another line. <laughs> Exactly. We're like, hey, Get you're here. in the wrong place. And the brown also works really well for gold, which is what this necklace is. So, hooray. And you can see that I kind of have to go over a line a few times. That's because the Copic resists the Sharpie just a little bit. The black is so potent, it just goes down and, uh, and overrides anything underneath it. But if you want to get that subtlety of color, you do have to be a little bit more patient. It's part of why um, these are a little slower, the, the doubles, because singles often just get the black Sharpie, but you can see uh, every line has to be put down two or three times for the... It really does work out pretty well that doubles take double the time. So we, we can manage our, our line pretty well nowadays. Now a lot of times I'll leave the background as just Copic, um, or I'll use a really light Sharpie color to do outlines. So that just helps with that sense of depth where the foreground character has more contrast, has all the detail and sharpness. I started taking pictures and, uh, and scanning these in probably 2011 or so. So there's, there's a lot that I don't have pictures of. And I don't usually take pictures if it's a direct duplicate. Like some people will bring me a photo of an altar I've done. They say, I want it as close to this as you can possibly do. And because those are basically the same, I don't usually take pictures of those. But altogether, with all the pictures I've taken, 
I, I figured I've done somewhere in the neighborhood of 2,000 Lilianas, and I calculated the, the cost of, uh, of, of mint Lilianas, which is usually what I get and all that, and I figure I have desecrated about a quarter of a million dollars worth of magic cards. That's kind of a fun feeling. Really quick, what Steve's doing here is his final touches, and I think this really brings stuff to life. So he finishes up with those line markers, and then he'll come back in and just do a couple highlights here and there with a lighter color. Um, he goes back to the fine point. Um, yeah, it's one of the only things I use these um, these extra fine markers for. It's just a little of these But they really bring things to life when you use the fine points, um, as you can kind of see. So he'll use that for highlights and stuff. Yeah, and one thing that I'm going to do to this piece that I won't be showing you here because I need to wait for this to dry is this green is kind of cool and you can you can it looks like you can see it on the stream it's kind of cool compared to yeah it looks very blue in the stream compared to the rest so I'm going to run over it with a little bit of a yellow just to bring it back in line my rule is that I don't alter other people's magic cards and the the biggest reason there is I don't want to I usually do a lot of goofy alters I don't want to piss off anybody. I don't uh, want that, and it's a can of worms. It is a can of worms. So, so the, the basic policy is just mine. Because well, he won't do anyone else's. But, but for Brittany, for a special if, occasion, if the artist of the card brings it to me and says, "Will you alter it?" That is that is an exception that I'll make. I've made it for RK Post, and uh, and I've regretted it ever since. Honestly, oh, gosh. he retaliated. That was bad. <laughs> um. <laughs> And the other last touch is we sign it. Yep. Alters almost always get double signatures. It's only if they ask not to for some reason that I don't do it. But they've become they've become very popular, the double signature. And sometimes I'll do embellishments like uh, like on the Tudor Brewery, the big blood spatter. But on uh, on this one, I don't know. It doesn't nothing speaking to me as far as what it needs as an embellishment. I'll get a little bit more of these sort of scaly, scaly look. Well, I'm done. There's another one little quick last thing that I decided to do since it's sitting in front of me. Um, they have these pastelish colors, right? They have cream yellow and they have like sky blue and stuff like that. Now, they do something different with these. They are not the same formulation and they're very, very light. You can't cover very well with them. They're not opaque. But. You can use that. Uh, for one, they're good for highlights, so we'll just do a little bit of highlights on the skin here. Um, you gotta be careful because the marker will eat through. So if you put, put it down too heavy, instead you'll have a hole. So that's no good, you have to be real gentle. But it's also good for things that you need to be lighter, but still translucent. So like a fairy wing, um, if you want to show the background that's still there, that's what these are good for. Um, they're, they're, they're basically like half water. They, they, will, they will put down about half of what you need. And since you can't go over them over and over again, these are only good for that kind of treatment. But these are the stages that we did today. You can, um, those are, that's, that's start to finish uh, how I do them. And under normal circumstances, it doesn't take quite as long. So this one's cats. The goblin so on launch this one, pad. So I can totally tell what I'm doing because it was just sketches. But it's basically he has all sorts of explosives underneath a shoddy board because you know you just light that on fire and then that propels you and that is goblin transportation. And it's just different angles that I was sketching from. And this is poison stripes. The squam work is um, the topic was. Goblin vehicles or goblin or inventions or, or something. Yes, I think what was the the one? No, that's the futuristic. Oh, this is the robot. Yes. The uh, the portrait. Um, I was about to say poison. If you remember poison missed last week because she was super uber tired, mm -hmm, so she mm -hmm. did too. She caught up on the squam works. I like the the integration of the old school Asian wear with the cyborg. That's cool. That looks like fun. It also looks like something that would just break me in every way. Yeah, it's a goblin vehicle. That's how those work. Goblin rocket cart. That's awesome. 
It looks so off, fun. Off. That looks like something you'd make as a kid I, that I, is like the worst idea ever. Right, I would totally ride that to my doom and enjoy the whole way. <laughs> That's wonderful. Thank you, Poison. All right, uh, the next one I think was Brittany. That is hardcore. I, uh, I especially like the, uh, the nose art. <laughs> it's because it's Brittany. Yeah, it's a nice touch. She said she's never painted a car. It gave her fits. <laughs> Did a great job. I really it, yeah, like the it, it looks really good. And everything. It looks really good. Um, vehicles are surprisingly hard. You would you would think that uh, they're since they they don't have all these uh, curvy things and and proportions that we're used to seeing like on a person that they would be easier. But they're they're not. They're I like the checklists tricky. too. Fire teeth, risk of death, <laughs> fire rocket, fire, fire, fire. See, risk of death. I think that's the biggest checkbox. That's what uh, poison also had is the risk of death. But it's that risk of death, risk of fun. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I, I also like the kind of forced perspective, like the forced style here with like. Yeah, the sort of the spherical perspective. perspective. Yeah, the almost fisheye slightly. Mm -hmm. It's very fun. It lends a lot of that chaotic feel to it. Scott said in the chat, uh, thanks Full Metal, now I have no desire to drive my normal car ever again. <laughs> this one's Jamek. His invention is a club made of another goblin. And then it hits the other one. Oh, is it like, um, what's the game? The pins and cups or something? I like the goblin tied to the... <laughs> Does he have, I can't quite see it. Does he have like little nails in his head? Like. <laughs> you said goblin invention, so I did a couple versions of, yeah. We, we said a couple different things to give people, it, it, basically very goblin themes. I like it a lot, Jamek. I, re <laughs> I really like the one tied to the bat. That yeah. makes me joy. <laughs> oh, Jamex was sort of the uh, body and chalice of the void, those uh, goblins. Sort of body and mind and chalice of the void. Oh, that's funny. Uh, this one's Dan's. <laughs> that's great. And as a Actually, as a, a Warcraft fan as well, I like this for a couple different reasons. I like the stitching on the balloon too, that's great. <laughs> Kat actually is a hot air balloon pilot. Yes, I am. <laughs> that's fun. super cool. And Dan did two, so here is number two. Now it's in space. Very space. intrepid. Space. Space. Oh, nice. I like the space background. I think everyone on the chat understands the whole idea of, uh, of making sound effects because they are all writing in their space. space. <laughs> so this was for two weeks ago. Ah, uh, this is the robotic portrait. Okay. Yes, I like it. That, now it makes sense. <laughs> That's why there was two for that one. Oh, so, so I need, okay. So I need so to copy. So the other link is this week. Okay. In the future, that I mean, cool. just to tell people, if you do have two, it's probably easier to do it like Dan did, where it's a separate line. I, we have never defined it, because we're all learning how to do this. I like all of her, her little satellite antenna -y thingies. That's, that's key. The one keeps making me, I don't know if it is, but it looks like a marshmallow, marshmallow. on a stick, and now I want marshmallows <laughs> on a stick. <laughs> this is very Calvin and Hobbes. I, I like this. It's, it's fun while also still having the threat of death. <laughs> Let's go murder! Oh, That's adorable. You've even got the little scarf. <laughs> the little cat, the little hob scarf. Very cute. Super cute. Aww, I really like that. I like how sim like, simple it is and fun. And this one, it's a, long, uh, it's a wheelbarrow of doom. All the burning, all the was fire. That that this is Asterosa. Asterosa. Yes. Yes. I like that. And I can tell Astrox's style, but I also checked it earlier. I like the wheelbarrow. It made me joyous. For a he second? said it's a goblin grenade vehicle to ride in. <laughs> of course you'd want to ride with a lot of high explosives. That's a that, goblin yeah, that's thing to do. That's what makes it a goblin vehicle. And it's also great to have an open flame there, because it's easy access and what could possibly go wrong. And you need to see your way and have a way to light your grenades. Exactly. Or bombs. Exactly. So um, now we're going on to the J-Doodles. Again, the topic was city fish. The business shark. Aw, he's so cute and happy. He's a business shark. He's just so happy though. It's probably. For some reason I looked at that and I immediately thought of uh, the pursuit of happiness, that Will Smith. Mm -hmm. Oh, I didn't see that one. I, I don't know why, but it just that's what came to mind. 
In the city, there's a special word to describe the relationship between a big fish and little fish. Lunch. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Oh, and I, I love the, uh, the old uh, tycoon look to him. And the, he's even wearing the little crab fish. Little crab bib. Bib. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's awesome. Good job, Brittany. Oh, this is a very, very different take. Oh, the love. fish has a city. The turtle has a city. Like... Discworld. Yeah, Discworld. It's our chewing. I like it. Whose is that one? Very nice. Very nice indeed. That is Jamek. I like it, Jamek. And and like we said before, we love how people take these ideas and then turn them on their head. Jazztopus. Jazztopus. How do you say that? Jazztopus. Jazztopus. <laughs> I like him. He's very cool. It reminds me of Parks and Rec. Uh, what's his name? Oh, Ron Swanson as, as something silver. What's his name? That one was Dan's. And let's see. Search uh, it. Oh. This one, the whole city is underwater. Oh, yeah. We have okay. an underwater city. Yeah. I like it. It's a city fish, but the whole city is underwater. That's it's super cute. Robert was saying that last one is a small fish in a big city. Oh, it's so take true. the fish out of the city. <laughs> nice, Jamie. It was so cute, too. I like how the fishy was looking around. It was adorable. Young, bright eyed, new city fish. Oh, he is super a city cute. fish. I like it. I like he's, his pants. And he's, he's, he's got like his little, is this him uh, tourist, I can't, touristing? I can't see him like screen to us. Is it a map or a PDA or cell phone? Yeah, it looks like. It's a cell phone, because he's a city fish, so he's got to have his cell. <laughs> Playing Pokemon Go. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> ah. <laughs> it's a sexy city fish. It's a modern day deep sea angler. Oh gosh. <laughs> right on. <laughs> it's a street corner fish. Street corner city fish. She does. She's got that strut going. Hey. From the neck down, I might think about it. <laughs> you did a really good job of capturing the strut. That's true. <laughs> oh, so, yeah. So we don't nice. get to see whatever's, whatever's dangling. Is that because it's, uh, it's, it's squared not in. appropriate? Oh, gosh. <laughs> what, what, what's dangling? What are we missing? Come on. Come on, Seth. What are we missing? Seth said if you click it, you'll get to see what's hanging down. Look at that. Very fancy looking. You, uh, you managed to get a lot of territory covered. Yeah. <laughs> I love the bubbles coming out of the scar. <laughs> Is it a bookie fish? Yeah, it kind of Booker? a bookie fish. Oh my yeah. gosh, it even has like the, the classic those, the like pork pie hat the, and the yeah the and all these all these hat. ledgers yeah. and uh, oh my gosh. So that's is great. is the bag a makeshift sap? <laughs> oh, that's great. Yeah, it's smoked salmon. <laughs> <laughs> Who smoked salmon? Oh yeah, he's got a he's got a ton of attitude. A lot of cool compositional stuff going on. There's the colors are great. You 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 doing you. You're doing impressive work there, Bakari. This one is Cabby Boy. Fish City. That way. Very cool. Right, that's Those a big goblin noggins. shark, I think. So that's a combination of everything there. You've got your goblin shark vehicle thing and the <laughs> fish city. City fish. Yeah. <gasps> Bravo. Very nice, very nice. Bringing everything all together. Cabby Boy says he does signs during the day. Oh. And here is Scott. This is a big city. Fish. Jamek and I were kind of on the same wavelength. That was a very big fish. Oh, see, <laughs> yours reminds me not so much not not so much of um, this world. Yours reminds me of Hitchhiker's Guide. Oh, oh I yeah. can see that. Yeah. When the whale falls out of the sky because right. of the random the random machine. City fish having a chat. And Janet is a big fish too. See, the other one was a little fish in a big city. It looks so sad and underwater and cute and orange. And Janet's is a big fish. That is a big fish. Janet's visiting it. Maybe it's like the, it, actually, I don't think it's supposed to be, but it reminds me of the, so they have a, the stock market on Wall Street, they have the bull, and then recently that one guy paid to put the girl standing in front of it, defying oh, it, right. which yeah, I really yeah, like. Yeah. It reminds me of that, but it's the big fish and the little girl. Oh, Janet was that? saying that's what it is. Oh. <laughs> so this one is from Andrea Raddick, and it's for 
Janet. If you guys remember, a couple weeks ago, it was Janet's birthday. Janet asked for fish for her birthday. Mm -hmm. And Andrea participated in it. And instead of doing seven fish, she just did one big city fish. One really big fish. One of Janet's favorite artists is Andrea Raddick. She, she really appreciates it. So we commissioned Andrea. And if you haven't seen Janet's stuff, we've commissioned Andrea to make Janet a fish. We're going to get her a little picture of it and probably a playmat of it too. Mm -hmm. So this is Janet's birthday present. So happy birthday, Janet. A little, little belated, but oh. happy birthday. So I guess all that's left is uh, squam work. So for next week, let's do uh, invocation slash masterpiece cards. Take your f one of your favorite cards. Um, doesn't necessarily have to be Magic the Gathering, but like just something from a game, uh, and do your own new masterpiece version of it. All right. Take care, you guys. See you next week.